ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर टाइम रत्नाकर कृष्ण राजू एफेक्शनेटली कॉल्ड कृष्णपा इज द सन ऑफ चिनाकम राजू एंड फर्स्ट कजन टू बाबा थ्री इयर्स यंगर दैन हिज प्रेशस कजन He was his childhood friend and one of the earliest devotees. As a young boy, he was an active participant of the Pandari Bhajan group. When Baba returned from Rokonda, Krishna Pa became a regular bhajan singer, as well as tabla player, accompanying Baba around Puttaparthi on many occasions. Baba showed him a vision. of the samadhi of shirdi baba's associate he was also a witness to baba in the form of a snake in the mandir shrine when baba was away in mysore during the pavali baba gave him the responsibility of uh, partially supervising the construction of prashanti nilayam in this capacity krishna maharaju coordinated with baba on the construction work especially when baba was away in bangalore and in coorg he would pay wages to the construction workers and help to grind the mix for the construction work he was in charge of the dynamo in the mandir and later in charge of the power generator for a while he looked after the light and sound systems as well between 1945 To 1975, he accompanied Baba to various places on his tours around the country, and between 1951 to 1955, it was his responsibility to prepare coffee exclusively for Baba. Baba selected his bride Saraswatamma and performed the marriage in the Prashanti Nilayam Bhajan Hall on the 1st of March 1956. Baba took upon himself all the responsibilities connected with the marriage, decorating the marriage procession jeep, and feeding relatives and friends for the five days of celebration. Krishna Pa has been an inspiration for all visiting and resident devotees of Prashanti Nilayam Ashram. He has willingly been interviewed continuously over as many as four years, providing. invaluable information he is a happy family man with three daughters and two sons well uh, baba may have even stayed in pedavan kamarazu's grocery shop for a while i do not belong to you alone he would repeatedly remind his relatives he was even restless even at the home of his sister venkama and her husband subarazu also Any expression of anger or pain greatly distressed him. Later, he may have felt that the outward manifestations of his divinity and the growing number of his followers were unusually troubling the family. Certainly, when the flow of followers increased, Venkatesh's house became too crammed for space. The Karnam Sai Subbama then offered Baba her spacious house. for his spiritual activities one day baba sent for subama and kamalama they went to his house with an offering of coconuts bananas and other fruits kamalama would say of it later he used to wear only shorts and a shirt those days after his bath he came and stood in a bath towel we carried a few coconuts which he broke before a shirdi baba picture he had then he said i am not a ghost i am shirdi baba he materialized flowers bananas and coconut pieces offered them to shirdi baba's photograph performed harati and lay down we woke him up after some time and offered a dhoti and a shirt and invited him to come for dinner he readily agreed He came after two or three days with Subarazu of Kamalapuram accompanying him. We offered food on a silver plate to Baba and on a plantain leaf to Subarazu, 
Baba mixed together all the dishes offered and ate everything. He did not leave anything behind. Soon after, he settled down in our house itself. We kept a Shirdi Baba photo on a table in the center of the hall. He said to us, You will not have children in this life, but I will be there as your child. You may have to undergo a lot of hardships because of your adopted son, but be assured you will not have any more birth. Though Karnam Subbamma had immense maternal affection for Baba, this never affected her devotion to him. She saw Baba as God. Once again, as she did when Satcha was a small boy, she saw the universe in his mouth and fainted. When she regained consciousness, she invited him inside her house, making him sit in a chair, putting his feet on a silver plate, performed Pada Puja, and sprinkled water on her head. When other Brahmins discouraged her devotion to a Kshatriya boy, she said, He is Krishna Bhagavan. Yes, he is God of the gods and is God to me. It is my wish to follow him and worship him. Baba used a small room in Subhama's house, both as a dressing room and the place where he spoke to visitors about their lives. Later, this will be popularly called the interview room or Korika room. Korika means desire, where boons are granted. The house had a large hall with four pillars at the center. Bhajan, puja and all other functions in the village were conducted at this place. Devotees would decorate these pillars and Baba would sit in a chair at the center. As time progressed, Pada Puja, anointing and other functions were celebrated later. But at night, he slept in Pedavankamarazu's house. Initially, when Baba returned from Oravakunda, bhajans were held only on Thursdays. Later, as the following increased, people gathered on other days as well, coming to seek personal audience. Encouraged by Baba, Subhamma and Kamalamma became perfect examples of hospitality. Their cooking becoming a continuous affair to provide for the large influx of visiting devotees. The number of visitors would often swell unexpectedly and the prepared food threatened to be insufficient. At such times, Baba, who had instructed that all devotees should be fed, would be informed of the predicament. He would then bless the food, which would multiply mysteriously, so that everyone would have his or her fill. The following would be such an instance as narrated by an old lady who was staying in Karanam's house then. She asked two coconuts to be brought. When they were given to him, he struck one against the other, and both would break exactly into house. He then sprinkled the coconut water on the little heap of rice and vessels containing the other items and gave us the signal to proceed with the task of serving all who have come or may come until the dusk. In years to come, Baba would especially remember Subhama's dedicated hospitality. He would talk of her incessant work from dawn until midnight. Boiling rice, grinding chitneys, mixing curries, and frying papads, all the many exact processes of cooking for the varied groups of people arriving at all hours of the day. The grinder in home was never silent, Baba would say. During this period, Kondappa, Keshappa, Janakaram, Krishnamarazu, and Venkamma were Baba's very early attendance, staying with him throughout the day. It is a rare privilege indeed to attend to his personal needs and be fortunate witnesses to many astounding occurrences. Once before he had moved to the Karnam's house, when Baba's activities were becoming uncontrollable, his furious father ordered, lock this crazy fellow inside the house, which was done. 
from inside the house, Baba materialized Vibhuti and put it on the forehead of his cousins who were watching him through an open window. When the cousins reported this to their father, Chalavan Kamarazu, he said that Baba probably obtained the ash from a country cow. The children knew better, for they had seen the Vibhuti being materialized. They emphatically clung to the veracity of their claim. Chinavanga Murazu went to Baba and asked him to show proof that he was extraordinary. Baba proceeded to show him a vision of Shirdi Baba's seat and shawl. On another occasion, during this confinement, when, when Kamma brought food for Baba, he converted it into processed lime. Many others were given a vision of the shrine of Shirdi. Under different circumstances, Yen Kasturi narrates, one evening some people came from Penugunda to Puttaparthi. Among them was the old lawyer and a family friend, Krishnamachari. At the Karnam's house, he and others may have spoken to Pedravan Kamarazu about Sai Baba for the latter expressed his inability to understand the overwhelming phenomenon. It was all a big mystery to him. Upon this, Krishnamachari called Padavan Kamarazu a cheat and charged him with various misleading innocent village folks with tall stories. This upset Padavan Kamarazu so much that he went to Baba and challenged him to convince the doubters about his divinity, so that they might not blacken his name as the lawyer had done. Baba asked him to bring all doubters directly to him. At this, the Penugonda party was taken to Pradhamayam Kamarazu's house, where Baba was at that time. Subama accompanied them. Baba asked Subama if she would like to see the Shirdi Samadhi. When she agreed, he took her inside the house to her inner room and said, Look, much to her surprise, she could see the samadhi with all the flowers, incessant stick, the smoke and fragrance, everything down to the last detail, and an attendant sitting in one corner, murmuring some mantras to himself. Baba told her, On this side, see the Anjanai temple, and in the far distance, See the Marcosa tree. It appeared to her as if in some vast space, looking at the scene in Shirdi, the entire landscape spreading out before her for miles and miles to the horizon in the distance. Well, when she was brought out after this thrilling experience, she persuaded Kishnamachari to follow Baba to the same inner room. Baba took them all in one by one and vouchsafed to each the same vision, a panoramic view of the Samadhi at Trinity and its locale. Padavan Kamarazu says that he was taken inside after all the rest and when he came out he was a changed man. His own doubt has vanished. The friends from Pinagonda apologized for the slighting remarks and said, that with a divine phenomenon like Baba, the sanest remark for anyone would be that it was ununderstandable and mysterious. They and Subama and Pedro and Kamarazu were convinced that day that the little boy who was 16 was really an incarnation of Siddhi Sai Baba. Pedro and Kamarazu says that he instructed his family to consider Baba as divine and not bother him with any more littleness, neglect or temper. So that has been the early powers, miracles manifested there in Puttaparthi, where Swami stayed for a considerable period at the residence of Karanam Subbama. Karanam means village head. And now we meet in the next session. Thank you.